I mean, Alex had been popular. We had done lots of television things. Every time he did something exciting, like the, the nun, you know, we actually did that scientifically. We did a whole paper on it showing that it was repeatable. It wasn't just this, this one anecdotal thing. So yeah, the newspapers got onto it and there were you know, interviews all over, but you know, it would last a day or two and then it would fall apart. And so after he died, I was in complete shock. Um, it was on a, we found out about it on a Friday morning. It was just, it was a nightmare. Over the weekend, friends came from Washington. They drove up to be with me to help me. Um, local friends were making sure, I, people were bringing food to make sure I would eat. They, you know, my friends, you know, would trundle me off to bed, not that I could sleep, but they would, you know, make sure I would get some rest. And over the weekend, the board, my board of directors from the Alex Foundation put together this obituary. And again, I, I was totally comatose, I mean, not functioning. But Monday morning, I call up the folks at, at, at Brandeis, who had been working with me on PR for years, and I say, well, you know, Alex died, and, and we have an obituary. And they say, well, you know, this is a bird. It's, it's not going to get a whole lot of traction. I said, just release it, you know, whatever. Um, we're getting phone calls. Rumors are coming through. You know, we need to make an official statement. So this is 9 a.m. It takes 40 minutes to drive from my house to Brandeis. And by that time I get to the lab, my phone, is, my cell phone's ringing off the hook, the lab phone's ringing off the hook, my lab manager's cell phone is ringing off the hook. I, people are calling from all over the world for interviews about this. And I'm, again, you go into interview mode, you hold the phone up, you, you know, close your eyes, focus on the question, answer it as best you can. I mean, I'm used to doing that, so I could snap into this interview mode. It was something I could hold on to, but I didn't think about the ramifications. I just coped. And the emails were pouring in, 3,000 to my private account, boxes and boxes of mail coming, people telling me Alex's impact on their lives. There were three articles in the New York Times. I mean, New York Times, his obituary was in The Economist. I mean, that's, that's, you know, that back page, it's reserved for world leaders, maybe Pavarotti, you know, folks like that, a parrot. Um, it was just, you know, Manchester Guardian, I, you know, all these, ugh, it, it was just overwhelming. And the letters from people were completely overwhelming. People telling me, I mean, there was one woman, she had been contributing $10 a month for quite a while, and I'd write her little thank you notes. Her nickname was Wren, which I thought was cute. And, you know, I'd write her little notes, thank you so much for assisting. And I do that, when people contribute, I mean, I, I have to say, maybe once in a while it falls through the cracks, but I really try, religiously, whether it's $10 or 10,000. I mean, for the person who's giving me $10, this could be more percentage of their, right, or, yeah. or their income, you never know. So I write little thank you notes. And so, but I'd never known backstory, and now she sends me a letter about her backstory. Uh, a number of years ago, she'd been diagnosed with one of these really nasty diseases that don't take you out but make your life really miserable. And she was suicidal. She just didn't want to cope with this. And she's sitting there thinking about how she's going to end it all. And the television's on, and, and it turns out a little story about Alex. And she looks at this little bird doing all this interesting stuff, and, and somehow that gave her a new lease on life and she actually started thinking about this and got a bird and, and connected to this. Um, you know, amazing that, that you think that Alex somehow prevented somebody from... Pretty remarkable, yeah. isn't it? Um, we got letters from, from a grade school. Okay, the week before the teacher had done a, a, a project on animal intelligence. So she brought her gray into the classroom and talked about intelligence and conservation and stuff. When the children heard that Alex had died, they all wrote me notes, sympathy notes. So this is a, a grade school children drawing little pictures of Alex and then opening it up and, and writing these lovely little notes. It was just overwhelming. And that's, um, and so that's why I ended up writing the book because I realized that people didn't know my backstory. No. They were all sharing theirs. When I, when I go give, with giving talks, it was always science. You know, I'd be invited to the International Congress, you give the science. You go to a colloquium, you give the science, even at bird clubs. I mean, I just gave the science, and then I would, at the end, I would often say, well, I, we need some funds to keep this going, and we literally pass the hat. But 
I never shared with people the struggles that we had gone through, and I realized that they were sharing their struggles. I needed to share mine. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.